Hello there, I'm Ren, a university student and note-taking enthusiast. Let me tell you a story. Ever since becoming a student, I have been searching for the answer to everyone's biggest question. How can I be successful in life? Or better, how do I learn? I'm here to tell you how to solve the mystery of a student like you and how to succeed in the classroom and bring your knowledge out into the world. Can't wait to unpack the whole mystery? Here's an upfront answer. I use all of these tools. In fact, they all mix together. Instead of a clear recipe to learning, my method consists of more of a pool of ideas that you can draw upon. Here's the master plan broken down into an outline. I think the most important part and the first step of actually learning anything is to want to learn. Watching this video is already a step in the right direction and you're being proactive with your learning. We need to change the way that we think about learning. Stop studying for the exam. Study instead to retain the knowledge. Study to learn. Stay away from the numbers. If they're prohibiting you from genuine learning, put them aside. Ignore the GPA, the test scores. The key idea here is to actually learn something from your education. For university students, you are paying for your education, which is certainly not a cheap expense. View the money spent as an investment in yourself. Have some confidence that you can achieve greatness in your learning. Now, I must say, this requires time and lots of it. To master your learning, to learn correctly, you must first learn to learn. This is the toughest part, but the first step I took towards success was to commit and dedicate myself towards an essential idea, continual and lifelong learning. At the beginning of my approach to solving this mystery, the education that I have been so blessed to have has shown me a great revelation. All I knew is that I would never want to stop learning. I always wanted to learn more. And what can I say? Learning is addictive, and the more you learn, the more you realize how little you truly know. Learning is a process of self-discovery. Something else to consider is that learning works differently for everyone. You will need to find the best method of learning for yourself, and mine might be different, and I'm still learning to learn, but this is my process. In the digital age of phones that pretty much run our whole lives, and cars that can drive themselves, it might be ridiculous to even take a minute to look at the ancient note-taking method. Plain old pen and paper. Might I dare to suggest that we revert to the ancestral cavemen part of ourselves and start mastering taking our notes on paper? First of all, I find that with a lot of my university classes, professors are still fans of using pen and paper. They pass out physical copies of lecture notes and materials, and they find that that is what works for them. So for these classes, I just take notes on what is handed out to me, plain and simple. During the lecture, I take notes on the material based on anything I might find confusing in the future. It turns out that in most of these classes, your instructors won't let you use digital devices anyways. Mainly though, I use pen and paper for notes in calculation heavy subjects. It's easier to map out my thoughts and numbers are just easier to work with on paper. It's also helpful to have the ability to physically crumple up your paper and throw it away when you no longer need your work after you get the correct answer, or if you just mess up terribly. Very naturally satisfying for some reason. Another great thing is the vast amount of real estate you have in terms of laying out dozens of pieces of paper on your floor to see a full picture of all of your notes. Probably not very conventional and not great for the trees, but if you're like me, this is extremely helpful to organize your thoughts. To stay safe, you can always back up your notes by going through a second process of improving your memory by digitizing them through typing them up on your laptop. You might even choose to write down your notes. And I say that with no judgment at all. Multiple scientific and psychological studies have proven the benefits of memory from handwriting your notes. 
Additionally, if anything, writing things down definitely boosts your focus during a lecture because you must make sure that you are paying attention. One of the ultimate tips to learning is the connection of ideas. This can be demonstrated in your handwritten notes through mind maps, drawings, and charts. One way I do this is by writing down my questions, and then your questions can be connected in a map, and you can figure out how to answer the questions you have. This way, you already know what you're struggling to learn, and you can focus on those subjects. As Albert Einstein said, the important thing is to never stop questioning. Wise words from a very wise man. Different types of learners prefer different methods, but charts and drawings are always helpful. They work perfectly, and it's so simple to structure everything just the way you'd like. Just touch your pen to the notebook, and your brain does all the work for your hand. Now, if you'd like to advance a little closer towards the 21st century, my second step is probably where you're heading. I've made a few videos already about the iPad, but never explained exactly why I use it for my notes. The iPad is, I believe, the single best note-taking experience I've ever had, and it's pretty much the combination of the handwritten experience on paper paired with the luxury of digital files. If I were to only pick one device to take notes with the rest of my life, it would be this. You can pretty much do anything you want on paper, just with the screen, meaning that if you believe handwriting your notes is better for your memory, this comes with the iPad as well. Of course, this means less real estate as you probably aren't buying dozens of tablets to lay all over your floor, but it comes with many benefits as well. Effectiveness is definitely one of them, and you won't need to worry about erasing pen marks or having eraser shavings all over your desk definitely conserving a lot of your time. Now, to properly learn from your notes, I believe that you need to encounter the information multiple times before you can fully understand anything. So, the organization of your notes is a step in taking notes. This might seem really counterintuitive, like you're wasting time to put together information when you should probably spend the time actually understanding it, but I believe that you need to process the information in a well-organized manner, which will cut down the time that you need to study, giving you more time in the day. That's what I thought too, until I tried something new, and found that creating your notes in a different way actually revolutionizes your ability to learn from them. I made a final revision page for pretty much every topic within a subject that I needed to learn. My notes that I take directly from lectures are an absolute mess, and even if yours aren't, this is probably a good chance for you to compile information, forcing yourself to process and understand what you are actually learning. In making a final note page, you are condensing information to only what you realize is important for you to know. Your brain has to work hard to distinguish between what you want to learn and what is just excess information. This act in itself pushes you to understand each idea that you decide to include or exclude from your notes. If you do this the day after your lecture takes place or even a few hours later, you're implementing the action of spaced repetition, which again, just engraves that exact information into your memory. Since you've picked it out, you have told your brain that this idea is something you want to know and you're more likely to remember it. Now, within the iPad, clearly there are many different note-taking apps to use. I personally use OneNote, GoodNotes, and Notability, and all for different purposes. These endgame pages, as I call them, are typically created through the GoodNotes app on my iPad. Occasionally, I also make these on the computer if necessary. This little page will change a lot for you. After making the page, you may choose to create a mind map in addition to it. Learning how to link ideas that you've covered and discovering how everything ties together. It's also a great way to test yourself with active recall. So, the main driver of my life is my laptop. You see college students carrying around their laptops everywhere, and it's definitely the device that most students own. This is the most common method of taking digital notes, and for very good reason. Laptops are generally accessible, and as you've seen,
can house many different apps for note-taking and productivity. It's essentially the holy grail of notes. This is a completely different part of the game, since notes are now typed instead of written out. The apps I use on my laptop are Remnote, Obsidian, and Notion. And not surprisingly, I use them all for very different purposes. For academic purposes, Remnote has been my app of choice. So far, I haven't found an app to replace it, and it seems to be the best possible way for me to implement spaced repetition and active recall in my note-taking. Here, I often take lecture notes, but I also create endgame pages that I know I will need extra practice on, since I'm able to study the content repeatedly. Also, I use my laptop specifically for concepts that can actually be typed out. As you'd imagine, math and other calculation and diagram heavy material don't fare well with laptop note taking. Remnote has the powerful abilities of creating a mind map within your text through an idea called linking. You can form and click on links to mimic your brain organization, which is an amazing feature to direct and navigate your thinking. Feel free to watch my video dedicated to Remnote if you want to find out more. Linking concepts. Whether that's through a mind map, or on paper, or a tablet, or your laptop, is an art that is difficult, but very rewarding to master. You must first understand each idea before you can learn to link them. Think on that for a bit. Use this digitizing process as an opportunity to transfer any final revision topics you know you need help on to your laptop and print them out if necessary. Again, reverting to good old pen and paper really isn't such a bad thing. Highlighting, although not proven to be scientifically effective, helps a lot of people process information. So printing something out and drawing on more of the page could be the final push you needed to fully imprinting the information in your brain. Lifelong learning is not only about academic learning. I believe that I must be able to learn from and reflect upon my personal mistakes as well, when, in fact, it's a huge part of my growth as a person. This is where Obsidian comes into the picture. I have been using Obsidian as a personal journal to reflect on major events in my life and be able to pour out my feelings on paper, or in this case, a screen. It has been a great journey of self-reflection and growth and I am learning so much about myself and the world around me. Notion is my main tool for planning video scripts and my basic channel management platform. I don't do much real note-taking on there, although I still find it a pleasure to look at, so I enjoy typing my scripts using it. So, at the end of the day, I hope that this can serve as your wake-up call to pursue your own journey of lifelong learning. Quit the complaining and take the initiative to be the best student you can, whether that is academically or through any other means in the real world. Stop taking notes just to take them. Pick up your pen and write to learn. Open up your laptop and type to learn. Start taking action and strive to live a life learning to learn.